the outcomes actually haven't changed as much as people want them to. That in America, the police killed more people in 2018 than 2017, and 2017 and 2018 killed more people than in 2014. The outcomes are either steady or getting worse. Just take us inside some of the <clears throat> protests um, at the time you were there, the extreme tactics that were deployed, like this five second rule, a lot of people um, in the UK won't have heard of that. We were in the street for 400 days. Some people look back at the protests and think that it was like a long weekend and it was like, no, it was 400 days, it was a long time. Uh, and that in August, September and October 2014, it was illegal to stand still. So if we stood still for more than five seconds, we were arrested. And I never forget those days, what it was like when the SWAT cars were tracing us down the street, when they were shooting rubber bullets at us in Baltimore, when they were shooting pepper balls. Illegal to stand still. How can it be illegal to stand still? Who made that rule? The police made it up. A set of officers walked up to me and they said, you can no longer stand here. Uh, you also can no longer pace. That we essentially just had to keep sort of walking. I think the police thought that the five second rule was gonna mean that we were gonna be too tired, that we were gonna like just go home because we couldn't stand still anymore. Uh, and instead it was like, you know what, if we have to walk, you're gonna have to walk. So we lapped this one huge street all day and all night. Some of the Democratic candidates are talking about reparations, Elizabeth yes. Warren and Kamala Harris. Are they on the right track? Is that what should happen, reparations for slavery? Yeah, I think that, I think the 20, so there are a lot of candidates, right? There are 20 people so far, which is sort of wild. I think that Warren, I think Kamala, I think Corey, I think that there's some people really pushing us uh, to like have these bold ideas about how to get to a world of justice and equity in society. I'm always mindful not to think about these ideas as radical because uh, correcting historical wrongs is not a radical thing, right? We should accept this as like But a it sort is of a basic. radical solution to pay out money to every black citizen in America. It's only, you know, I would push and say like the only reason it's radical is that it's black people. We actually, you know, when you look at the history of America, it's like we paid, we gave reparations to slave owners. When slave owners, we paid slave owners for like the harm of freeing their slaves. So there's like a, there's already a history in the country of actually paying reparations to people. Like we've done it before. It's only when we talk about correcting the historical wrong for people of color that suddenly it becomes this like grand idea that nobody can imagine. It's like, why would we, why would we end slavery and then pay slave owners for like the harm and damage that they were caused by like freeing people. You know, like that's sort of a wild thing. It's like the least we could do is actually pay the people who were treated like property, you know? So it should happen. It should happen, yeah. And I think that there are some interesting proposals, right? There's a proposal in Congress right now to study it because there's never been a government study around like what reparations would cost. You know, the estimates are around in the trillions, so it'd be a lot of money. Like what would that look like? It's also things like how do we what does reparations really mean? Is it land transfer? Is it sort of money? Is it resources? Like, how do you actually correct for the ills? There's some interesting proposals out there. Cory Booker has the baby bonds proposal that uh, the two researchers, Derek Hamilton and uh, Sandy uh, Darity, put forward. And that is that would do a lot around uh, giving access at birth to different levels of equity. So that would be interesting. Uh, Warren has another proposal that hinges on housing. And that could be a powerful proposal, too, because we know that housing uh, is one of the biggest assets that people have that is like a wealth generator. But this is not just about social benefits or welfare. When you talk about it as a reparation for slavery, there is an argument that it entrenches victimhood. Yeah, I think that, uh, you know, again, it's only for people of color that the idea that we correct and repair a harm suddenly makes you a permanent victim. And, you know, people don't use that argument for the criminal justice system. It's like, if I jump across this table right now and like stab you, it wouldn't be like, you know, sending you to the doctors doesn't make you a permanent victim. It actually heals you, right? And like, that's what we'd say about reparations is that like, w you've done something to generations of people that has disadvantaged them, no fault of their own. They didn't do it, they were harmed. So we want to take them to the hospital and the hospital should look a certain way and like the healing should look a certain way and healing people doesn't make them victims, it makes them whole. All right, thank you very much. Good to be here.